the sex offender registry. So many families rely on it. For many parents, that list is the last word on where the worst kind of criminals live and where their kids should avoid. But what if it turned out that many of the worst sex offenders never even made the registry at all? The Channel 4i team has found case after case of people committing the sort of crimes the list was made for, yet avoiding the sex offender registry. Our chief investigative reporter, Jeremy Finley, is here with the results of his investigation. Well, our investigation found you'll never know if some sexual predators are living near you. And what we found has some parents and lawmakers saying there are loopholes in the sex offender registry. Let me kiss. Shane Wiseman is one of those dads. Play ball. He's very protective of both his infant son with his wife and of his five-year-old son from a previous relationship. I'm always worried about where he is, who he's around. Yeah. So when Wiseman found out his ex was dating this man, William Sexton, Wiseman immediately looked on the sex offender registry. After all, William Sexton pleaded guilty in 2006 to sexual exploitation of a minor, and he was often around Wiseman's son. I thought he would be, so I checked. He was nowhere on the registry. And a Channel 4 I team investigation found Sexton is hardly the only person who found what many call loopholes in the sex offender registry law. Our investigation found case after case of men and women convicted of serious sex crimes avoiding the registry altogether. Look right there. In some case files, we found special handwritten notations keeping them off the sex offender registry. People pleading guilty to crimes like having sex with children and young teenagers, repeatedly exposing themselves in public, all allowed to avoid the registry. It means you won't know if they're in your neighborhood, if they live by your kid's school. And with Halloween just days away, you won't know to avoid their house. If you're a sex offender, you're a sex offender, and you need to be on the registry. So how is this even possible? <clears throat> the Channel 4 I team examined hundreds of court cases to find out. What we first found may surprise you, that for years, people charged with crimes like sexual exploitation of a minor could get what's called diversion, meaning if they went on probation and behaved themselves, they could ultimately get their record wiped clean. You'll never know they committed the crime. That's what happened in William Sexton's case. He was convicted of sexual exploitation of a minor in 2006. At the time, it wasn't a crime that got you on the registry. It is now. And it turns out the state never required all those offenders to sign up for the registry. That's right, sex offenders from just a few years ago got grandfathered in, even though their crimes would now put them on the registry. But your name will be featured in the story. I reached Sexton by phone, and he agreed to interview with me and explain how he says he was, quote, set up. Please call me as soon as you can. I never heard from him again. <clears throat> we also found case after case of older men and women having sex with young teenagers, but not on the registry. It stems from a provision in the statutory rape law to protect people who fall under what's called the Romeo and Juliet clause. That keeps down. Meaning an older teenager who has sex with his younger teenage girlfriend. The law says not sex offender registry material. But here's what the Channel 4 I team discovered. We found men in their 40s having sex with young teenagers and in some cases children charged with rape and aggravated statutory rape. Crimes that certainly would have gotten them on the registry. But these men pleaded down to statutory rape, meaning they avoid the registry, essentially getting the same punishment as an older teenager who had sex with his slightly younger teenage girlfriend. Men like Mario Verona, charged with raping a 13-year-old girl, ordered to get sex offender treatment and a psychological exam. But he pleaded down to statutory rape. He isn't on the registry. Men like Lamont Hurt, charged with the rape of a nine-year-old child. He even admitted in court filings to sexual relations with the girl, but denied raping her. He put it down to statutory rape, not on the sex offender registry. Victims advocates say, if you think these teenagers or children had consensual sex, think again. But when you have somebody who's so much older than that teenager, you know, there has to be a certain level of coercion. Sex offenders do what they can to keep off the registry. State Representative Deborah Maggard has sponsored several sex offender laws, 
and says each year, it seems, offenders and their attorneys are finding more and more ways to avoid the registry. She says what the Channel 4 I team found will now get lawmaker attention. So I do think it's something that we need to address. Maggart says she now wants to sponsor legislation that would give a judge discretion. Even if someone pleads down to statutory rape, the judge would then have the discretion to put them on the sex offender registry. She also wants to eliminate what else we found, that someone has to be convicted of indecent exposure three times before they get on the registry. Yeah, she says that just doesn't make sense either. Pretty eye-opening stuff, Jeremy. So Halloween's just around the corner. What can parents do? Well, you know, in reading all these cases, I came across the fact that oftentimes the victim's parents need the offender. So, you know, guys, we've heard this time and time again. Know where your kid is going, and even if you've got a weird vibe from someone, if they're, even if they're not on the registry, here in Nashville you can look up their criminal history. And we put a link on our website to show you easily what to do. But guys, those cases that got diversion that then got their records expunged, we'll never know about them. Jeremy Finley, thank you. If you know something the Channel 4 I-Team should know, send us an email at iteam at wsmd.com. You can also call our tip line. The number's right there on the screen. For